Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to share with us today the message, uh, the theme for this year. Last year, we, uh, last year, we were in the year of a new birth. And this year, 2020, is the year of a new dimension. Would you say it together with me? The year of a new dimension. Ah, there you go. There are two scriptures, two verses that we need uh, to learn or we need to, it's going to be like a golden scripture for us for this year. It was written in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 and Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 to 14. We're going to learn about that today, the message. Um, I'm going to share uh, with you the message from Pastor Nico. And what I get myself, what I receive from the Lord, the revelation that God given to me. All right? Now, let's we open this. Deuteronomy 28, 13 to 14. Read together, and we will learn from this. This is the promise of, of God for us. Okay, read with me. The Lord, together please. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath or bottom. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. 14. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you, or command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. So, it says the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. Amen? Can you imagine? That's the promise of God. God will bring you to the top to be the head, not the tail. So that means people will follow you because you are the head. Amen? That's the promise. But maybe we said, can it be happen? And um, I think this is NKJV or NIV. I will read my uh, version. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Always mean always. You will always be at the top. Never at the bottom. Maybe it's only in our, in our dreams. We dream that, but never happen. But that's God's promise. God is a promise keeper, amen? Amen? God knows how to feel, fulfill that. But this promise, it, there is a condition to that. This is not grace. You don't need to do anything to receive grace. It's grace. It's a gift. This is not a gift. This is a promise. A promise, like a contract, you need to do something. There is our part, yeah, required something from us. So, and now we are on the, uh, entering the third week of our 20, 21 day of prayer and fasting. Um, I thank God. I'm so grateful. There are like many uh, people join this uh, fasting this year. Last year, maybe only two of us. But uh, this year, from the throne room, the prayer warriors, we pray and we, we're fasting together. On the ninth day, uh, when, um, we, when, I, when I read the uh, meditating, the word of God, devotion that we take from Pastor Jensen Franklin, God spoke strongly, strongly to me, and I believe, I believe this is also the promise for us. Would you uh, mind to open with me, Joel 2, verse 24, to 20, uh, 24 through 33, 32, I'm sorry. So when I read this, it's like a fire burning in my heart. God speaks so clearly. Speak this to the congregation, to the church. And this I will share with you. 
Joel 2, 24, 32. Yeah, let's, yeah, read, read, read together. One, two, three. The, the threshing floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrous, uh, wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Maybe in 2019, you felt like you were in the desert. You worked hard, but you, don't, you didn't enjoy. You never satisfied. Always lack of something. You eat, you, you eat, but never satisfied. Never full. You work hard, but it's like there is hole in there. And there are always expenses, expenses that greater than your, than your income. You know, the locusts ate them. So it's like you work hard in vain. You didn't enjoy your life. So the promise of God this year that God will restore you. Amen? Amen? God will restore you. And remember, folks, that whenever we, have, uh, we, uh, we face hardship in our lives, there are two things might happen. First, it can be a test to your faith. Amen? It can be a test to your faith. So God, want, uh, God re just wants to test you. Will you still have, believe, put your trust in him? Test your faith that he will, he's still the God, Jehovah Jireh, who God the provider. Test you with the hardship. But the, the, the other things, that's the judgment of God. Because we turn our back from him. Because we didn't follow him. With total obedience. Because we, we just ignore his commands. So that's the punishment of sin. The punishment. So there are two things. And remember, on, uh, in, in, uh, on this uh, scripture verses, it says that the locust, for, for, for kinds of locust, it was great army which God sent among you. So it's from God. So God himself sent that locust to eat them, to eat the, the blessing that, you, that you're supposed to enjoy. You see, there are two things. But now God said, I will restore you. You will eat and will satisfy. Amen? Amen? You work and you will enjoy it. Abundant. It says the Lord will make uh, uh, the threshing floor shall be full of wheat. So your har you will enjoy the full harvest. Amen? Amen? There's no more. With locusts, no harvest. So that means famine. That means hungry. That means poverty. But now God said, I will cast them away from you, that locusts, and I will restore you. You will enjoy, and the vats, the, the vats is the wine press. So your grapes, the, 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 your uh, vineyard, will, you will harvest with fullness. This is what God, uh, I mean, spoke to me on that day, on the ninth day of, of uh, fasting. I don't know what happened with you in last year, but... I believe, like uh, the theme for this year, 
Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, 13 to 14. You will be, you will be the head. That's uh, talking about new dimension of blessings. Amen? You will move forward. You may, you may never say, I never live in an abundant. I never live like overflow. But God will bring you to a new dimension of blessings. Say amen. If you want to see that, there is a condition to that. Like I said, this is not grace. This is not grace. This is a promise. All right? So let's see. So this is the promise of abundant blessings. How to make these promises happen in our lives? That's the, my, the most important thing. What the condition, the, our parts, God pro, God, God's part it is to fulfill his promise. To make it happen. Our part now. Number one. Number one. Say it. Total obedience. Total obedience. Abundant blessing required total obedience to God's command. Say amen. Amen. Total obedience. No bargain. So that means you have, we have to follow his word. Not based on your feeling. I feel I like it. I like this word. Yeah, I feel I can do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I feel, I can, yeah, you know, it makes sense to me. I like this. But other things you say, oh, no, this is not for me. This is only for the ministers and pastors. This is all for the workers. No. All the promises, all the words of God, it's for all of us. Amen? Amen? So, Basically, total obedience is just do God words, God commands without question. Amen. As a parent, as a parent, as a mom, basically, yeah. I don't like when my daughter questioning me. When I ask her to do something. In my heart, why do I need a reason for her to do something that I, as a mom, asked her to do? Because back then, when I was a kid, I don't even dare to ask my dad when he asked me to do something. Just do it right away. If not, I'm, he gonna hung me. <laughs> you know? Dare to ask. I, don't even, I didn't even dare to just, like, you know, stare at him like that. <laughs> I would be in a big trouble. And when he asked me, go get this, I just, we just go right away. Oh, you didn't know my dad. <laughs> we didn't dare to do something, but that's how we're supposed to do. Amen. That's how we attitude it to God. Just like Abraham. That's what you call faith. You put your trust in God 100%. That means whatever he said, just do it right away. Amen? That's obedience. Don't question him. He's the omnipotent, not you. He's the mighty one, not you. He's the one who owes you. Who has plan for you, for your successes? So you need, you see, now follow his word without question. In Deuteronomy, saying the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you see, there is the word "if" there, so that the condition will not going to happen without you do the. Sentence after if. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord, you will always be at the top. That's God. He's a promise keeper. This is not the words from me. This is from God. So if you pay attention, you obey it, 
And uh, I mean, with total obedience, I believe this will happen in your life. Amen? Amen? Do not negotiate with the word of God. Just do. God asks you to forgive the people who hurt you, who, who, who I mean, who sin to you. Just forgive. Don't ask. Don't tell God he or she doesn't deserve that. We ourselves doesn't deserve forgiveness because of our sin. But he forgive us anyway. All right? When he has, okay. Number two. To receive the promise of abundant blessing, honor God. Let's open Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. This is talking about abundant overflow of blessing. Read with me. Three, two, one. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops. Then, you see that? So, or then, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Oh, we love this. Do you? I love this. Your barns will fill, will be filled with plenty. More than enough. Abundant. And your vats will overflow. Overflow. More than you can handle. Overflow with new wine. We love this. But before this, there is something condition to this. Nine again. Honor God. How do you honor God? With what? With what? Possession. What is your possession? In other uh, translations say wealth. What is your wealth? It's not talking about uh, all about, uh, always about money. Yes, some. One of the possession is money, but it's not that. Just that. Wealth. What is in your possession? You have time. You have uh, energy. You have, uh, what else? Whatever you have. You have talents. Honor God with that. Give back to God. Do something not only for you. It will make you fat, not your barn. Not your vats. If you, it's for yourself, you will fat. Because you don't share. God shall honor the Lord with your possession. And with what? The first fruit. Read with me. And it's not or, it's and. And, read aloud please. And with the first fruit of all your increase. Another translation said, the first fruit of all your crops or income. Pastor Nico reminds us every year, every beginning of the year, he always reminds everyone yeah, under his I mean, uh, 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 pastoring care. He said, do not forget to bring your first fruit to God. This is the key of abundant blessing. What is the first fruit? I explained the last year very detailed. Again, remember when the harvest come? Imagine the field, rice field or anything. So the first part, the first harvest, the first part, area that they harvest, they have to tie them and bring them to the priest. And the priest will pray. Let's say the, the field is this, as big as this stage, okay? When they, uh, the, they harvest, they only harvest this size of the field. It can wait because this is the first that they sow, right? They will bring that to the house of the Lord, bring them to the, the, to the priest. And the priest will raise them and pray to God. God will bless the rest. They never fell, failed. 
to obey this word. This is from the, um, if, if you read uh, Exodus, there, Deuteronomy, God spoke to Israel about this. So Pastor Nico told us that's very easy, very simple for us. The first income of the year, that's the first fruit. Okay, that's, that's hard. That's hard. You pray, and like I said, this is the word of God. Honor the Lord with your position and with the first fruit of your increase. You know why the Jewish people are so blessed? They obey the Lord without question. All right? The Hebrew word for the first fruit for, for, is bikurim. It's literally translated to promise to come. So first fruit is promised to come. So first fruit is the first step to receive the promise after that. So you see this? Why God command uh, uh, us to do this? All right, now number two. Like I said, there are two scriptures that uh, for, uh, it's like a golden scripture for us. You will hear this. Uh, we will like preach about this um, Again and again, all right, from this, uh, let's open Romans 8, 29 to 30. Oh, no, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. So there are two scriptures, Deuteronomy uh, 28, 13 to 14, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. Deuteronomy talks about New dimension of blessings. And let's see this. Let's read together. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. All right. Let's read together again. One, two, three. And we all, with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let me read other translation. And we all with unveiled face continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are progressively being transformed into His image. Whose image? Jesus into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So if you, if, if, if you really look careful about uh, uh, these words, you will see that God will transform us to be like Jesus, amen? Like his image, Jesus' image, and then into his image from one degree of glory, one level of glory to a new dimension of glory. Amen? Greater way, even more glory. So let's read now Romans 8, 20, uh, 29 to 30. Romans 8, 29, 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son. It's more clear, right? That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. Say glorified. So God will glorify us who are transformed into his image. Amen? This is our goal as a Christian, to be like Jesus. That's why, that's all the process of our life, to be like Jesus. Jesus carries the glory of God. And we like a mirror reflecting his glory to the world. And God said, 
he will transform us from one degree of glory to another or greater glory. Amen? Amen? And people will see Jesus in you. Remember when Moses, when Moses, when Moses, Moses was on uh, uh, Mount of Sinai and talked with God for 40 days, when he came down, his face was shine, was shone. And people said, cover that, cover, cover. We can't, we can, you just can't deal with that. Moses covered. Moses has to cover his face. Because the glory of God deflects from his. But now, unveiled. So the glory of God will be in you. Amen? Amen? So number two, about a new dimension. One is a new dimension of, new dimension of, Blessings. Number two, new dimension of God's glory. Wow. You know, God will glorify you. You know, when um, the king of England or the queen, what people, when, uh, I mean, uh, when people come down, yes, majesty. Why call majesty? The one who is glorified, Amen. On the top, honored, and this can be you and you and you and you. Amen. This is our goal to be like Jesus, to be conformed to the image of Jesus. People will see the glory of God through our lives. This year, this that glory will, will be in a higher degree. People can tell. I will uh, give one. There was one um, a lady in this church. When he first, when when she first came, when she first came, uh, saw she brought by her friend to come to the church. She was uh, really in the uh, bad shape. So I told the, 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 the worker, the chief worker, and said, you need to minister to her. She had, she, she had a lot of things with her. She, she, a lot of things, you know. And uh, we shared, we talked, finally we talked, and I ministered to her as well. So many things, and she, she got sick a lot of time, many times. Many times. Then she decided to get baptized. You know, and after that, this is, this is what I heard. Now she changed. The face is different. It was before like, you know, um, long papaya. Like I said, that shape. But now you can see joy in that. She can smile. She can talk to you. Like, you know, the burden was lifted. There is shine, the light of God you can see in her. So the glory of God will change you. Amen? 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 So, back to the second Corinthians. It said... You are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from, which comes, so the glory comes from the Lord, who is spirit. So who's this talking about? The Holy Spirit. The glory comes from the Lord who is spirit. So if the Holy Spirit is in you, you will be transformed. Amen. You let yourself to be led by the Spirit. Then you will be transformed. Because the glory comes from God. And God is the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is in you. Amen. See that? The Spirit of the Lord is in you. 
Be aware, always knowing, speak to the Holy Spirit. Every time, everywhere, when you are hurt by somebody, when you are just, I mean, in the freeway, just like, you know, one morning, you were so distressed, and then this man just cut you off. Talk to the Spirit. What should I do? I believe the Spirit will not say, chase him. Will not. Talk to the Holy Spirit. So we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. The promise of God in Joel 2, 24, as I read, if you keep reading it, it will lead you to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Wow. It will lead you to that. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. What you need is the Holy Spirit. What we need is the Holy Spirit. It's in you already. It's there. Only you just let the Spirit sleep. You don't, you don't, you don't like, you know, you don't uh, uh, treat the Holy Spirit as a person. You don't, you never like talk to him, pour out what, what you feel. It's like in your, basically be honest to yourself. Do you feel God really far away or close to you? If you say far away, when I pray it's God far, it's like, do, 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 it takes so long. It, even consent will not take that prayer up there. Because you know, there's no relationship with God. But the Bible said, even closer than your clothes, because the Holy Spirit is in your heart. Amen? Amen? Treat the Holy Spirit as a person. Thank Him. Talk to Him. Even when people, when you walk, maybe you're very, oh, is this crazy? Talk to herself. It's okay, you talk to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit will give you. This is what we need for the 2020 and, and for the rest of our lives. We need this to be success, to be to be successful. We need this to, 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 to conquer every problem. I quote for, taken from Jensen Franklin the, uh, the devotional. All right? One, anointing. Say anointing. What is anointing? The ability to do something at a whole new level. We need anointing. Who was David? Nobody. He was just a shepherd. How can he rule that nation? The anointing. Amen? The anointing. Take him there. Took him there. The anointing will take you to the top. Amen? Amen? Say amen. We need that anointing. We need that anointing in our in, in our, our everyday life. We need that anointing in our service. When we serve God, we serve people. We need that anointing in your school. You need that anointing in your uh, in your, in the work in your workplace. You need that anointing in your business. You need that. Psalm twenty three verse five. This is also talk about uh, uh, abundant life. An anointing of God. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cups runs over. Who wrote this? David. David said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm, I'm not scared of my enemies. You, God, even prepare me a table and my enemy just look. Just look. Watch me. I enjoy my table. Because God, the one who prepared. And I enjoy that in front of my enemies. You, will, you won't bother with your enemies after all. You won't bother. They will bother, but you're not. You just enjoy the table with everything on it that God prepared for you. You want this to happen? It can be happen because God said that. You see, and you anoint my head with oil, my cups runs over. 
overflow. Amen? Can you say amen? Yes. You see, anointing, we need that. We always have the uh, uh, pr- uh, anointing prayer. All the suffering of, of God has to come on the second Friday. Every month to, be, to receive that anointing. But you can be. Sometimes for me, I just pray to God and I lay, hand, I lay my own head with my own hand. <laughs> I, I need your anointing, Lord. I need your anointing. So I can walk under your anointing. Nobody can touch you because that anointing mark you. Amen? Hallelujah. Number, uh, what Holy Spirit give you? What we need uh, to, for this year? Wisdom. Say wisdom. What is wisdom? God's given ability to make right decision. Amen? Sometimes uh, we face like consequences or our bad decision, wrong decision. We made mistake, yes. Then we say, okay, I did that. No, this is the consequences that I take. But sometimes we say, God, this is too much for me. I know I was wrong, but please forgive me. God forgive you, but the consequences is there. <laughs> we have to face that, all right? And then wisdom from God, God's wisdom, God's given ability to make right decision. Not based on your understanding. We have our own wisdom. Based on our experience, our knowledge, we have that. We can be like, really have a wisdom, but it's a man's wisdom. Our wisdom. But sometimes our wisdom cannot, can't apply in that situation. That's, that's why something, what? I have, I calculate this. I already, I already think about this and that, the risk that, here and there, here and there, but still fail. Because that's your wisdom. God's wisdom is God's given ability to you. Discern. To discern at the right time what decision to make. Amen? We will make many decisions this year. You have to make decisions for yourself. You make the decision for your family. You, you will make decisions. You have to make decisions for your, 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 your kids. You make decision for your future. Ask the Holy Spirit that is with them. Thirteen, what the Holy Spirit will give us. Favor, say favor. So what is the three things? Why, why we need the Holy Spirit? Always Holy Spirit, one. Anointing, two. Wisdom, three. Favor, what is favor? Favor means that doors open that no man, no man can shut. Amen? Favor. One day of favor is worth a year of labor. So one day of favor in 2020 can change your whole future. Say amen. That's favor. That's why we need favor. You know Joseph? It says he found favor in the eyes of God and in the eyes of men. When Jesus grew, he also found favor in the eyes of God and the eyes of men. I share many times when I pray and speak blessing for my daughter, there's so many things that I decree and declare. One of that is this. Let you may find favor in the eyes of God and the eyes of men. You know what is, it, it, from favor, it's come favorite. Right? Is this grace? Do you think favor is grace? Do you think favor is grace? Huh? Confused? That's okay. At first I confused too. Favor is not grace. Grace is grace. Favor is not grace. Let's see this way. You must have reason why you choose that person as your favorite student or your favorite son or daughter or your favorite friend. You must have reason for that. Grace, no. You don't need reason. If God full of reasoning to, to, to give us grace, we don't deserve anything. 
we won't receive grace. But we have reason to have a favorite of something. If you ask me what is your favorite uh, food, I will say Padang food in Korean. Indonesian food, mpe mpe. That I have reason for that. What is your favorite uh, fruit? I will say rambutan. What your least favorite fruit? Sawo. That's why I don't eat. I don't like kiwi as well. Tastes similar. Why? Because I don't like that. Uh, you, you know, smushy thing, spongy. I don't like that. I have reason why I don't choose that one. What I choose the favorite. What is my favorite? You see this? If you want to gain favor, you must do something. When he was when, when she was in fourth grade, Ab Abby, she wrote uh, on the first day of school, she wrote a letter uh, to her teacher. And she set up goals for that year. Dear uh, Mrs. Osorio, I believe that this show will be a great school year for me. I believe, uh, so she, she wrote that, this, these are my goals for this year. And as she listed one, two, three, and, and, and things, uh, I, I will be more organized on my desk. That's her goal because she is, she is so like messy. And then, uh, second day, I don't know there are how many, but at the, the, the last part, she's, uh, I, my goal is to be your favorite student. <laughs> and then, at the uh, closing, she said, please skip this and check. So she, she, uh, she put like a, a, a box on the way. Please check if I made my goals. At the end of the year, <laughs> she gave a homework to her teacher. But the last one, the, her goal is to be her teacher's favorite student. She must do something to gain, to gain that, to receive that, to be on that part. Favor. When you find favor, when you get that from the Holy Spirit, like uh, I quote here, the door will open that nobody can shut. You got favor, one day of favor is worth a year of labor. You don't, with favor, you don't need work so hard. Amen? Because it's favor of God in you and you will be successful. Whatever you do, then you will harvest. You will, it will produce. You see, that's why we need favor. I want you to meditate this message for this year. God will bring you, this year is the year of a new dimension. I've give you two dimensions that will, uh, well, it's talking about this from these two uh, verses to scripture. First, new dimension of blessings. Then, new dimension of God's glory. New dimension of blessing talks about the promise of abundant, restoration. Okay? And then, the dimension of glory that we will transform to the image of God to bring his glory. Amen? That's why the glory comes from God, who is spirit. We need the glory from the Holy Spirit to lead us for this year. Ask that from God. Anointing, wisdom, and favor. Let's stand up together, we'll pray.
if you were in that situation last year just like what was written in Joel 2 24 it's like your labor is in vain you work hard but you enjoy less Maybe you ate but never satisfied. Your life is far from abundant. Can you picture yourself to live in abundant life? To have a full harvest? Your wine is overflow. more than you can hold that's the blessing the promise of blessing maybe people people last year people just can't see the glory of God be reflected through you from your life The glory is from the Holy Spirit. Have that relationship with Him. So He will give us anointing, wisdom, and favor. Raise your hands. Sing it with me. Come Holy Spirit. Fall in this place I need more and more of you Fill me again with the power of your spirit Lord, I'm crying out for more Come Holy Spirit for Jesus name, Kerabashanaba, they 
message today Lord Holy Spirit seal it remind us every time that you are there about your word so every single day in our daily life Lord we will let our spirit us our own life to be led by you lead us we need you guide us we need you you anoint us Give us wisdom and favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.